I was wanting to be filming my Mr. Bill poker vlog right now, but no good. It's raining very hard, and they said that there are tornado warnings in the area, so no filming right now. Hello, Mr. Bill poker peeps. Welcome to the vlog. Sorry this is late, but as you saw earlier, <laughs> it's been raining like cats and dogs here in Texas, so I'm filming this on Thursday morning and I'm trying to get it out on Thursday evening. Oh my goodness. Hey, I wanted to remind you guys that poker is a game. It's supposed to be fun, it's a game. Now, I know poker can be competitive, it can be serious, but it can also be fun. You can do those other things and still have fun. I'm sure you guys can relate to a table that's full of regs and guys who are just serious and they got their heads buried in either a phone or a tablet and they got sunglasses on, uh, head covered up, maybe headphones, they're grumpy and that's when they win. <laughs> Compare that to a table where it's uh, players who will be friendly and talk, a lot more fun, a lot more enjoyable and just because a fr player is friendly does not mean they aren't serious, doesn't mean they aren't a reg. And of course, those kinds of players are way more fun to be around and, and to play with than the others. So this week at the Jack Casino, I played in one of the funnest games that I have ever played in. And you guys will see that here in a little bit. Wow, I got such a tremendous positive response to you be the villain that I'm going to incorporate that. And I think I've got one in this vlog too. So with that, let's get to the poker hand. Wednesday Night Poker, it's the last week of the uh, World Series of Poker uh, contest. Uh, I'm in third right now. I've already guaranteed a 1,000 seat. I can get a 1,500 seat if I can come in third tonight. Billy came in from Arkansas, which is just fantastic. So this week's You Be the Villain gets to be played at my Wednesday Night Poker League in a tournament. So starting stacks in this tournament are 10,000, so we're pretty close to the starting stack. Blinds are 5,100 and you are in the hijack with queen of clubs, 10 of clubs, checks to you, you make it 225, I am on the button and I make the call and everyone else folds. So the flop with 600 in the pot comes two of diamonds, six of diamonds, 10 of clubs, you lead out for 200 and I make the call. Uh, on the turn, there's a thousand in the pot and it comes the king of hearts. You bet 400 and I make the call. The river now has 1,800 in the pot. It's the seven of spades. You decide to check it to me, and I bet 2,100. What do you do? I'm gonna give you a range that I have four hands. Of course, I could have many, many more hands in my range, but let's just go with these four right now for you to narrow it down and figure out what would you do. So pause the video just as last week, take the poll, Put your thinking cap on and decide, are you going to be a chump? Or are you going to be a champ against Mr. Bill? Okay, so here's what I think of this analysis is you can probably throw out the pocket twos because if I had flopped a set, I'm probably going to protect against either the diamond draw or on the turn, certainly a diamond draw and a straight draw. So twos out. Next one I think that we can eliminate, not 100%, but probably, is Ace of Hearts, King of Diamonds. I didn't raise it pre-flop when you did almost a min-raise. I probably would do that, and even if I don't do that, I have a minimal value hand. Uh, so on the river, I'm probably not over-betting the pot with a value hand. So, Ace-King, out! So that leaves us with two possibilities, 8-9 for a straight, or ace of diamonds, five of diamonds for a missed flush draw. What do you think? In the actual hand, Ed Garza was the villain and Ed tanked for a long time and called. I had eight nine for the nut straight. I intentionally overbet the pot because at my league, nobody ever believes me. Um, I do bluff quite often but I thought the overbet of the pot would certainly look like Miss Diamonds, and it worked this time. And first break, start with 10,000 chips. First break, I have 17,700. Good start. Okay, we just combined tables. We're at two tables now, 18 players left. I have 32,000 chips now. Um, that's pretty good. All right, it's the second break. 
Uh, there's 15 of us left. I want an absolutely massive pot uh, just before break. I had pocket kings under the gun. I limped in because the button and the small blind were both shorties. I thought that maybe I could induce one of them to uh, shove all in if I limp and there was a couple limpers behind. So I limped, there was another limper. The button did shove for 4,400. At this time I had, I don't know, 15,000. Small blind folded, but then the big blind, Josh, who was the big stack, he shoved all in. I went ahead and shoved all in. It ended up being button had pocket eights, Josh had ace king, I had pocket kings. I held up and I went to a, just a massive amount of chips, so that helped. Unfortunately, Billy got knocked out 16th on probably what was kind of a bad beat, and he got knocked out to Dane, which is not good because Dane is the one immediately behind him. I gotta work on knocking Dane out. That's my goal. Seven left at the final table. Yes, four. World Series of Poker Points. Pain five. Here we go. We are down to five now. We're in the money. All in for 24. You don't. Mm -hmm. I call. Okay. King seven. King seven, King seven versus eight. eight. Ten. Here we go. And it was twenty-four thousand. Here we go. There's a seven. There's a seven. And a king. King seven. Twenty-four thousand. We are now down to four. We've got Dane, Carl, Rob. The plan myself. Look who woke up. All right. Let's do some pocket jacks. Here we go, Carl. Just give me diamonds. I don't care about the ace. Oh my Great. How horrible. And a diamond. I have 3,000 left. Gosh darn it. I got a check. All right, so you guys, six thousand on the side. This is what I can win. You're gonna win it, bro. I hope so. Where's my cards? Oh, here they are. I'm checking out. You guys are still. <laughs> I check. Oh, I really check. And I check. I check. Jack, I need a jack. I got a jack. I have two pairs. What? I got nothing. Jesus. <laughs> nine. Now I got oh. nine thousand. You win this. Yes. Anyway, I'm in the big blind for 8,000, so I've got 1,000 left. I have to fold. I don't think Rob's folding. Uh, All right, 9,000, Rob. 9,000, I have 10, 6, 10, 8. Oh, Let's go for a choppy. Domination. Choppy or a 6. I think I win this hand. Yep, I'm a winner. Stone just falls. Two. Carl, you got congratulations. Thank you. Well played tournament. I river Rob. I kind of feel Doesn't bad. matter. A great tournament today. A, thanks you, for coming. Billy, thanks for traveling. You did a good job. We all go to World well, Series in June. Yep. Cash game, play for about an hour and a half. In for 200, out for 500. So I won 300 bucks. It was a lot better than that for a while. So I went to go play at the Jack Casino in Cleveland on both Thursday nights and Friday nights. And these hands all come from those two sessions. So the first night of the Jack was just your standard game. Uh, it wasn't unfriendly, it wasn't friendly, it was just guys playing. So I have $350, I have king queen in the big blind, the cutoff makes it 15, I make the call. The flop with 31 in the pot comes 7, 8, 8. Uh, I check, he bets $10, very, very small. He's a young guy, I know he's an aspiring professional. Uh, a lot of those guys, don't like to fight back um, on a paired board. So I make the call with the intention of taking the pot away. The turn with 51 in the pot is a four. I check, he makes a 25, I make the call. River has 101 in the pot, it comes a 10. I lead out for 125 and he goes in the tank for probably three minutes and makes the call, ugh, with pocket aces. A bluff gone bad by Mr. Bill. My mistake here was the fact that the board on the flop had two diamonds, so it looked like I missed a diamond draw. I should have done this on a rainbow board, and then it absolutely looks like three eights. Uh, oh well, I screwed up. So this game had lots of straddling, there was lots of raising. 
I'm in the small blind with Pocket Kings, $250. There's a button straddle, which means they start with me in the small blind. Uh, I make the call of eight, knowing that somebody behind me is going to raise. Big blind calls, cutoff calls, comes to the button, and he checks his option. Ugh, that's not exactly what I wanted. <laughs> so the flop with 32 in the pot comes queen, six, five. Uh, I lead out for $20 and the cutoff calls. The turn with 72 in the pot is a 10. I lead out for 35. Cutoff makes the call again. River with 142 in the pot comes a nine. I bet 50. He tanks and calls and then mucks his hand. The end of the gun is straddling for eight. I make the call, cutoff calls, big blind calls, and the cutoff checks his option. So on the flop, there is $33 and it comes king of hearts, four of hearts, four of spades, and it checks around. The turn now comes the six of spades. Uh, it checks to me, I make it 10, uh, big blind makes the call. The river now with 53 in the pot comes the nine of hearts, he checks, I make it $10. He raises me to 90. Uh, I probably beat here. I make the call. I did not see that a flush was on board. I've made that mistake before. He shows 10-7 of hearts. I lose to a flush. Gosh, that's just a silly mistake. I bet you you guys have done that too, though. Everybody misses a hand every once in a while. In fact, what's the worst mistake that you've made uh, on a hand? Okay, I'm going to tell you guys about one of my <laughs> big mistakes that I made. And it was the very, very first time I played 2-5. Uh, trying to step up. I'm nervous. I'm scared. Oh my gosh, these players are so good and there's so much money. I don't remember all the pre-flop betting and stuff like that. But I remember after the turn, there was 450 in the pot and the board had ace of diamonds, jack of clubs, eight of diamonds, seven of clubs, and I've got queen ten of diamonds. And there was 450 in the pot, which to me was a heck of a lot of money. The river came the nine of spades and he bet $150. And I, looking for my diamonds, <laughs> folded my hand. And I didn't just fold, I folded the hand face up to show everybody, look how smart I was. <laughs> okay, the guy says, hey, you know, you just folded the nut straight. Oh my gosh, I was so embarrassed. I thought, I'll never be able to play at this level. I can never play against these players. It was just horrible and awful. And it actually, I remember that to this day, and it was very humbling. And now when somebody else makes a mistake, I actually feel for them. I know exactly how they feel. And it's happened to all of us. We all make the mistake. So anyhow, this was one of my big ones. Second night of the Jack was a friendlier game. Not overly friendly, but guys were talking. Uh, there was a guy that came up and sat next to me. His name was Joe. Uh, Joe was a good player. Joe won a pot against me, and he leans over and he says, hey, I'm just trying to get famous. <laughs> I thought I knew what he meant, but I didn't say anything. And he says, hey, I watch your vlog. I enjoy them. Uh, in fact, one of his favorite ones was one I did from the Jack Casino against two of uh, the Jack's better players, their regs. If you want to see that video, click up here. But Joe had watched that one, and uh, he said he just really enjoyed it. Um, I have King, King of Hearts, Queen of Hearts, and the plus one. I have $305. Um, it limps to me. I make it 15 uh, the cutoff and the limper call. The flop with 49 in the pot comes 10 of diamonds, 10 of hearts, jack of hearts. I lead out for 35 with my open-ended straight flush draw. Uh, the next guy goes all in for only $87. The guy behind him goes all in, but he only has $92. Of course, open-ended straight flush draw. I make the call and the board runs out four of spades, three of clubs. Ugh, that's just horrid. And I lose. I don't even know who won the pot and I don't even really care. <laughs> So the game changed from a friendly game to an unbelievable, ridiculous, have a party game when Jennifer showed up to the table. Jennifer, as we found out later, was 42, just a very, very nice person. Now at first, she was shy, she was nervous, but then she won a pot, she started talking to people, and it was like the little boy who had his finger in the dike, and once the finger came out, oh my gosh, it was just a flood, it was an explosion of words.
And all of a sudden it was Bunko meets poker. <laughs> It was just, it was fun, it was crazy, um, it was not a tough table, it was actually a rather soft table. There was a guy named Dave, and there was another guy named Joe, who were good players, and everybody else, it was pretty soft. I remember one of the pros, I think Daniel Negreanu, saying, if you want to find a soft game, find the one where there's laughter and drinking and all that kind of stuff going on. That was this game. So Jennifer was like a friendly reporter or a somebody who was writing an autobiography. Pretty soon, we knew everybody's name, we knew their age, we knew where they grew up, we knew about their kids, we knew about their grandkids if they had any, we knew where they went to school, we pretty much knew everything about everybody, and that was all due to Jennifer. She was like the bulldog reporter <laughs> in a very, very friendly way. So I was up at the Jack Casino that night because my buddy Dave, who I grew up with, my best friend, and his wife Missy, invited me to go to dinner. They were going to the Jack, so I joined them, and then I played some poker afterwards. And uh, Dave was sweating me a little bit. He didn't want to play, but he wanted to watch a little bit. So in the game was one of, honestly, the worst players I've ever played with. I've played with him before, but Jack, he, he plays all the time. I don't know how he funds his poker because he never wins. Uh, he would call down the second pair, third pair. He would shove with ace four. Um, he was just not a very good player. And that's the way he, I've seen him play every single time. He, there was a hand that I was not in where he had ace six. Uh, the flop came king jack six. They get all the money in between three players, like a $1,200 pot. He has ace six. Somebody has king jack. Another guy has ace king. He hits a six on the river to win the $1,200 pot. And I told my buddy, this is the best thing that could ever happen for me and the rest of the table is that this guy has chips. So about two hands after he won the big $1,200 pot, I have king 10 in the big blind. I have $351 and he makes it $10 from like middle position. Uh, there are two callers, the small blind and myself then make the call. Uh, I thought about raising to isolate this player, but a couple of the, I think both Dave and Joe were in this pot and those were good players. They would know I'm isolating. So I just decided to make the call. The flop with 50 in the pot came king eight eight. I'm certainly not betting because this guy will probably bet behind me. I check and actually it checks around. The turn, still $50 in the pot, comes another king. I check our friend there that's the awful player, bets 65 more than the pot, comes back around to me. I tank and think, and oh, what am I gonna do? And I make the call, everybody else had folded. The river now has 180 in the pot and it comes a seven. And he does probably what is the absolute worst decision that anyone could make. And he shoves all in for my effective stack of 276. I, of course, snap call. He says, dang, I guess you have a king. Well, of course I have a king. What are you thinking? <laughs> and he had a, he had 5'8". He had raised with 5'8". He did hit trip eights on the flop and got unlucky on the turn. But man, just a horrid, horrid play. I got into another hand with him about two hands later where I another, won another $100 from him. And he literally donked off his whole $1,200 that he had won in that pot in 20 minutes. Plus, he added on another $200 and lost that too. Anyhow, what I told my buddy Dave was right. I couldn't wait for this guy to get chips. Anyhow, if you want to see another video where my buddy Dave saw me on a great heater in Las Vegas, click on the video up here. So as players came to the table, we told them, okay, get ready for the Inquisition. And Jennifer always obliged, hey, what's your name? Where are you from? How many kids you got? It was just, it was actually very, very fun. It was almost comical because we all, the rest of the gang started getting into the conversation and asking, hey, we're writing a book. <laughs> All that kind of stuff is very funny. I guess the highlight of the conversation was when this 30-something guy came up, kind of a brash guy. He called himself White Gucci or Big Gucci or Big White Gucci. <laughs> and he firsthand, he puts his money down hard. Hey, come on, let's see it. And he had bluffed and he won the pot, but he was funny. So, of course, Jennifer starts getting the scoop on White Gucci. And not only that, his girlfriend was there. She was in her early 30s. And Jennifer starts talking about how she pretty she is. And then she says, you just have fantastic boobs. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the conversation was around this girl's boobs for, I don't know, five minutes. <laughs>
it was funny. It was a fun, fun table. So the last hand we'll go over at the Jack Casino. I'm in middle position one with pocket kings. I have $600. It's the second time in two nights that I didn't raise with kings, which is very unusual. The end of the gun made it $16. I made the call. I expected somebody behind us to raise. It had been happening all night. But the cutoff and the end of the gun both called. The flop with 52 in the pot came queen of diamonds, queen of hearts, seven of diamonds, and it checks around. The turn was the five of diamonds, so now I have the king of diamonds draw and I have an over pair to the board. It's checked to me, I make it 20. Uh, other players fold and the original checker calls. The river is the eight of clubs, he checks to me. I make it 50 and he tank calls with pocket nines. So I won that one. So all in all, in the Cleveland Jack trip, not uh, successful financially. I lost more money the first night than I made the second night, but I only lost like $150 for the two nights, but I had a great time. And for the week, I did really well because of Wednesday Night Poker League and, and uh, another game that I played in that's not on the vlog. Hey, you guys, share a fun uh, session that you had. Tell me something that happened like with my friend Jennifer and the guys at the table. Hey, it looks like the Mr. Bill meetup game is either going to be May 11th or May 18th. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I get this out by Thursday evening since I'm filming most of this on Thursday morning. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you guys for watching and subscribing and pressing buttons. Uh, and I will see you guys all next week. Have a blessed, awesome, fantastic week. I will see you. Bye. <laughs>